get a win right here. As simple as playing baseball. This thing is launched live, baby. On deck! Oil forever. Wrote one last ride, but most. This thing is launched live, baby. This thing is launched live, baby. On deck! Oil forever. Wrote one last ride, but I'm also just trying to, you know, go out there and compete and give it the best every day I can. And now. Austin Heimaru on deck show. It's our hardest and not leave any regrets when the final game's over. Just make playoffs win. Bring the team together so we can get more wins. Players, my teammates, we developed a really good relationship over the season. Brought to you by Plains Capital. Strong roots for a strong future. Financial products and services tailored to your needs. 8118 Dental Professionals. Dental care focused on whole body wellness. Sportsman's Barbershop. A friendly neighborhood barbershop. Horizon Bank. Since 1905, Horizon has been proud to work with local businesses across Central Texas and beyond. Hit for it. At Hitforth, we're hardcore about data-driven player development. By Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service, Perrytown Pharmacy, innovative care, timeless service, Nance Orthodontics, seamless state-of-the-art orthodontic treatment focused on you. And now to the Maroon Broadcast booth, here's David Roy and James Scott. Welcome in, everybody, here Ollie, live Vinny from Burger Field. David Roy, Number James three. Scott James here in the Scott. broadcast booth. Lulu, our producer, Next up here up with us Scott. as well. Number and then, of course, uh, Skyler, our quality control Number assistant. Uh, Skyler Gillespie, we got Alden Shep manning the first and third base cameras. And, James, we come in to tonight. An Austin High squad got swept last week against Buta Johnson. First game didn't look quite too bad, but then you get into that second game on Thursday night before the Easter holiday, which we hope everybody had a good and blessed holiday. And you go down losing by 10. Base running looked pretty good. Had great moments offensively, but then you run into some pitching problems from the mound. Yeah, uncharacteristically, we've played, what, about 22 games or something like that, give or take, this year. And we have yet to put together a complete game where we do all facets of the game well, where we pitch well, we field well, we run the bases well, and we hit well. We actually out hit Buta Johnson on Thursday, if you can believe that. Um, but we had a lot of uh, walks given up by our pitchers. So I don't know if it's an omen or not, David Roy, but <laughs> on the way to the ball game, a ballpark today, Don't Stop Believing by Journey came on the radio, and I love that. And I tell you what, if we're going to play in May, we got to win the game today because we basically have to win out. We are three games out of playoff contention right now uh, behind Buda and Westlake, which are basically tied for that fourth place. Uh, Anderson is at six, then Austin High here at seven, Del Valley at eight, and Aikens. Uh, Aikens and Del Valley are actually tied at nine. So if we want to play in May, we got to win today. Yeah, you got three games back in, in district, and we'll, we'll get into district standings in a moment. But for now, the National Anthem.
Let's play some ball tonight. Gentlemen, have a great game. So talking there a little bit for the break and for the national anthem, one of the things we, we discussed essentially was three games back in district. And so when you look at it from a playoff standpoint, we're into April now, and we're really kind of into the back stretch here of the district season. We're getting to a point still in a spot here where Austin can help themselves. Now, James, you and I talked about it last week. Going to need to sweep through here this series. Going to have to, at the very least, bare minimum, split next week's series. You, ideally, you would like to sweep that as well. But just in terms of getting back into that fourth place contention and having a seat when the music stops, it's really important that you start this series off on a positive note. Yeah, there's not a lot of room for error here. Not a lot of room for any sort of mistakes and it is going to definitely be playoff-like baseball atmosphere for the Maroons. We have to win tonight some key games in district. Anderson is at Lake Travis, and Bowie is at Johnson. And this might sound surprising or shocking to some, but we are fans of Lake Travis, Dripping Springs, and Bowie right now because our path to that fourth playoff spot is having the top three, which are pretty much out of our reach from a standing standpoint, beating up on everybody else and us sneaking in there um, and overtaking Buda right. and uh, Westlake, as well as Anderson, as a yeah, matter of fact. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye of those scores kind of throughout the night um, as we move in. We'll get you into the starting lineups here this evening. Uh, starting on the Austin high side as they're the road team here tonight. You'll see this batting lineup here up first. We'll lead off with Javi Godinez, followed by James Scott, and then Jack Umberhagen comes up into the three-hole hitter at the lineup here. Uh, Osby Contreras will come back, take up the four-hole. Then you'll have Lucas Pizanko coming in at the five, Charlie Reeves at the six. Drew Anderson, a new addition to the lineup over the recent weeks, coming in at the seventh spot. Patrick Bird right, coming in at that eighth two. spot. And I'll then be Jake here. Beck will also hit tonight to close out your lineup. Yeah, I bet you if you look at uh, the lineup positions, Javi Godinas, who's back up at leadoff spot, his best position in that batting order has been leadoff. Yep. This is his 23rd game to play. He's at 295 on the year with a 380 on base percentage, four doubles, a triple, and eight RBIs. And he'll be facing Noah Corpus. Corpus from the mound here this evening. And he'll start with this one coming down inside. And it will stay downstairs for ball one. The 1-0 finds his own here, comes back 1-1. And this 1-1 one, one pitch will skip across the plate here. Come back. 2-1 now. This one finds his own. 2-2 two, two here on the count. Oh, this looks like a fastball at 73. Looks like his off speed is 63 to 67. So our guys are definitely going to have to wait on the ball today. A little bit slower than what we're used to seeing. Full count back here. Javi Gadina standing in here at the plate working well. And that will send him to first on a walk. All right, that brings up James Scott. The Sarge, he's in his 22nd game. He's leading the team with a 357 batting average, 446 on base percentage, 19 hits, 20 hits actually. Mm -hmm. A triple, three RBI, seven runs scored, and leads the team with six hit-by-pitches. So the Sarge gets us started, lays down a bunt, and that will put one away, but it will advance. Gadina is over to second. Next up to bat, number 13, Jack Umberhagen. All right, that brings up the Lumberjacks. See if we can get the early lead. 
19 games for Lumberjack, 52 plate appearances, 275 batting average, 392 on base percentage. He's hit two home runs, four doubles, 11 RBIs as a team leader in the ribby department. So one away, Godina is at second, and a time call here. Lumberjack will be playing for Shiner next year. Outfielder first baseman. This pitch comes in high for Umberhagen. Comes up 1-0. Godinas, last time out, I mean, was pretty solid. 2 of 4 from the plate against Buta Johnson throughout that series. Uh, wound up essentially being 4 of 7 throughout the series there against Buta Johnson. So Yeah, it's in the last two or three games that he got on base all four plate appearances. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. I think his best position, he probably feels most comfortable leading off. Yeah. Umberhagen lets this one go downstairs 2-0. One away being the sacrifice bunt there from the Sarge to advance Godinas over to second, put him in scoring position. He pulled and that one. It was a wild pitch. That will allow Gadinas to come over here to third. He just didn't get rid of that one. It stuck in his hands and threw it right in the dirt. Skipped over to the other side, batter's box, and right past your catcher here tonight for Akins. Dave Snares. And that will send Umberhagen off to first on the walk. All right, that'll bring up Osby Contreras, sophomore Osby Contreras, playing in his 16th game. He's hitting an even 300, 353 on base percentage, nine hits, three doubles, three RBIs, two runs scored. In an early meeting. An early meeting here for Noah Corpus. From the mound, with this early meeting, we'll take an opportunity here to set up your defensive lineup here. For Aikens off the mound tonight, as mentioned, Noah Corpus Snares sitting behind the plate. You'll have Ariano over at first, um, Luke Kreka over at S Lucas Kreka, excuse me, over at second, Sean Ramos over at short. Oh, excuse me, it's Tenberg at second, Kreka at third. Then you have Ramos over at short, Perez out and left. Resendez out in center, and then Martinez, who's being DH'd for um, by Daniel Salas, but Martinez is out in right for Aikens. One away, pitch number 12 here for Corpus, and it is swung on and missed by Contreras. Umber Hagen takes second on the defensive indifference. So now we have two in scoring position. And there L1 one and Contreras. That'll sit down for a base hit, and the run from third will score. So Osby Contreras with yeah. an RBI double. Uh, RBI single. He took second on the throw, on and that's a head up, okay, heads up play sorry. because he, he hauled it all the way down the line, never stopped. And he was going to try to force the second baseman to throw the ball behind him, which would allow Lumberjack okay. to take on. Heck of a play by Osby Contreras. So RBI single out to left. Like he said, takes second on the throw there, but it puts Austin High on the board first. And swing and miss there from Luke Pizanka. Puts him down in the count 0-2. Pizanka, 18 games, 244 batting average, 392 on base percentage. Two doubles and a big fly. Big fly, of course, being a home run. Six RBIs, five runs scored. 
one-two count here for Pizanka. That 0-2 pitch stayed a little high. This one swung on and missed. Let him play it out, but he will be out, and that will be two away. All right, that brings up Mr. Personality, Charlie Reeves. 17 games, hitting 281, 368 on base percentage. Got a double, seven RBIs, five runs scored. Need a big base hit right here. That should score two. Contreras got pretty decent wills out there at second, especially yeah. for a catcher. So here's Charlie Reeves. Swings, misses at his plate appearance offering. Goes down on the count 0-1. Corpus, lefty here. Reeves swings, comes down 0-2. If Reeves gets on, we have Drew Anderson on deck. Corpus, this one well high outside. He reminds me a little bit of Drew Merrill from Anderson, their left-handed pitcher. Mm -hmm. We face game one of the season. Crafty lefty. One, two, this down the line over to third. The throw to first did not get made. It slips through, and that will allow the run from Contreras to score. Hey, we, we got just putting the ball in play creates some action. Uh, yeah. That was a pretty good play by the third baseman getting that ball, but he did make a good throw to first, so that would go down as an E5, but that gets two runs in, and that's what's important. First error and a costly one there for Akins as that will put Austin High up 3-0 here in the top of the first. Two away and up to the plate now Drew Anderson for his first at bat of the night. And this one gets sent right back to the center. Bounce off the mound. Throw to first. Will retire the side. Throw from short. So a quick little ground out, but Austin High, the Maroons, on top. 3-0 heading into the bottom of the first. And we'll see Jake Beck take the mound when we return. You're watching the Austin High live stream on YouTube. We'll be back right after this. Do you need a haircut? A real haircut? One that's tapered or blocked, clipped or trimmed just the way you like it? Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525, to schedule Schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. Welcome back in to the broadcast booth. David Roy, James Scott here live from Burger Field. It's a beautiful night here, an occasional cloud straying its way past us, but for the most part, Clear skies. That wind that we saw in the first game tonight has died down considerably earlier tonight. It was, you know, they were saying it was 10, 15 mile an hour winds, gusts up to 20, 25 miles an hour. It's died down at least a little bit, but you can see it. Gusts there still moving, just not quite as bad as it was earlier tonight, but still going to play a factor. James, you and I were talking about it beforehand that a lot of it looked like it was going to carry things over into left. Yeah, it's not swirling down through the ballpark here at Burger Stadium as much, and we're blessed to have this building to our right. So I think we're a little shielded from yep. it, but if you look at center field, it is uh, straight out uh, blowing, so it could wreak some havoc on there. But talking about wreaking some havoc, our ace, Jake Beck, is on the mound, and he wants to wreak havoc on Aiken's batting order. He's got 29 innings pitched, and this is his seventh game started right here. He's faced 134 batters this season. He's two wins, three losses. 
no saves, no save opportunities. Given up 22 hits in those 29 innings. Struck out 42 and only walked 16. Austin High jumped out to the early 3-0 lead there in the top of the first. In part, great opportunities there. Gadinas got you started. Umberhagen got walked. And then you had the base hit from Contreras that got things going. But the big error, in part, like you said, from third base, making that throw over to first that couldn't be fielded cleanly, allowed a couple more to slip on through. And Austin High up 3-0 up to the plate right now. You're Left fielder, J.P. Perez, and he will foul off his first at-bat here on the night. Starts him off with an 84-mile-an-hour fastball right down the chute. So the 0-1 offering here from back. This one gets fouled off, popped high, and... Behind the cage here, into the parking lot behind us. Jake's fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, four-pitch pitcher. Fastball is upper 80s. Off-speed tends to be upper 70s, mid to upper 70s. And the 0-2 down in the dirt. Ball one. And a one-two count here early for Perez. And Beck will step off here. And Scott calls for the quick meeting. And Yeah, I know a couple of weeks ago we noticed that they were having a meeting on the mound early, in the top yeah. of the first or bottom of the first, whatever it was. I asked James later, I'm like, hey, what, what's going on? You, you guys seemed out of sync. He's like, Jake couldn't see it. So sometimes those catchers will put uh, fingernail polish on their – their tips of their mm -hmm. nails or they wrap their fingers. Probably not a good idea if, we, if you're throwing the ball so much, but um, that way the pitcher can see what the catcher's calling. Uh, oh, to first, too high, and that'll slip through and allow runner to get over to second early. So, you know, James, those kinds of plays there, you, you have the swing. H how do you grade out something like that, you know, when you have that? Obviously, the throw over to first there being a little bit too high allows the runner to advance over to second. But, I mean, who who really kind of, I don't want to say necessarily comes at fault, but from a scoring standpoint, how do you score out something like well, that? That's 100% on Sarge. That's an error on the throw. If he – it's a – That'll go down as foul, foul ball. ball. So, on that one, uh, Jake did a great job of getting a swinging strike. Mm -hmm. James is going to come up, set his feet, and make a good throw to first, and he just airmailed it down the line. So, that'll go on as a strikeout. Runner gets on base on a wild pitch, mm -hmm. but he moves to second on the throwing error by James. So, it goes down as an E2, a strikeout swinging an E2. And the 0-1 here for Ramos. Chops this one back to Pizanka at first. He'll make the throw, take the quick out, as Perez will advance to third. This is as good as a swing and bunt right there. A little bit. Good play by Pizanka to get over there and make it and have the wherewithal not to throw for the lead runner. There's no chance there. So puts one away as back up to pitch number six. This will be seven. This one popped sky high into the infield. They're calling it, and it gets lost. Neither Second or short can get underneath it, and I'll go down as a base hit for Snares. And Coach A going to come out and have a quick meeting there. That meeting is likely a little less for Beck and a little bit more for your infield. Yeah, Jake's thrown three outs. Unfortunately, we only have one yeah. recorded. 
that one in particular, he had the both second and short in position. So that goes down. You're not sure if it's a lack of communication. If they are shouting to each other, we couldn't even hear it from up here in the booth. So, you know, either Godinas or Reeves needs to step up and call that, and it lands between the two yeah. of them. It's shortstop's play all the way. He's the captain of the infield. He's got to yep. make that. My guess is it's a combination of the wind and then twilight right here. Um, looks like to me both of them lost it in the lights. No excuse. The ball's still got to be right. made. And the play's got to be made. But, boy, you're really putting Jake in a tough spot here. Runners Again. at the corners, and it's uh, been a common refrain for us. Our pitcher's getting put in some tough situations. This throw down at the knee for Daniel Salas and touch inside. Comes back 1-0. On pitch number eight, this will be number nine for Beck from the mound. The 1-0 -oh off, steps off. Trying to see if he can catch any of these runners asleep. So Reeves and Godinas at double play depth up the middle. Kenny's in on the grass at third. Pazanka, of course, holding on. Cisneros at first. This one gets chopped over to short. Quick flick of the wrist. Throw to first. Mm. Not quite going to be in time. But it will put one more away. Number six, Marco Ariano. You know, that's unfortunate for Jake. Unfortunate for the Maroons. we got to step up. We talked about we haven't played a complete game yet. Mm -hmm. It's not starting off that way for us either. We did a great job getting some runs at the top of the inning, but our defense has faltered. One on this throwing error by Sarge and then yeah. the play behind second. We should be batting right now opposed to still on defense. So both sides uh, as of yet. Committing errors here early. This one gets fouled off. It's 85 off the wrist. Oh, one. one pitch here two outs and an air to each side here so far tonight check swing there they say he came around yes sir oh two Beck, the 0-2 wind up. Look at that card. Caught him looking. 73 starts at the head, breaks over the plate. Beautiful pitch by Jake Beck. So that will retire the side, leave a runner at first. And so we'll come out of the first inning. Austin High still with a lead, 3-1, to one, as Aikens able to see Perez come home. 3-1 to one lead here from Burger Field for Austin High. Time the second when we return. Real estate companies come and go in Central Texas about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. 
That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at TatePropertyCom and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. Welcome back in, everybody, live from Burger Field. David Riley, James Scott here in the broadcast booth. Jake Beck comes out of that first inning. 12 pitches thrown is the official number we've got on the board ahead of us. I feel like they're off by one, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> on the other uh, side, though, Noah Corpus came out of the first inning throwing 22. So moderately better when you look at pitch counts and things like that. And certainly on the scoreboard, definitely looks better for Austin High. Patrick Bird. Yep, we need some more runs here. Let's get it going again. Patrick Bird steps in. He's playing left field for us today. This 17 games played already. This is his 18th, 30 plate appearances. He's got a double, two RBIs, five runs scored. So here's Patrick Bird. To get us started here in the top of the second. Bird at the plate. Jake Beck will be on deck. And that first pitch for Bird. Can't find the zone. 1-0. Now once Beck comes up, we're back top of the lineup. Bird swings, misses the 1-0 pitch. Looked like he got a little ahead of it there, 1-1. One, one. Wind up from Corpus, high. 2-1 here. And Bird fouls this off down the first base line and well into the stands here. 2-2 for him. Bird, not a name that we've seen in the lineup of late over these last couple of weeks. I'm a little bit in the Neander tournament. And here he is driving this one into deep left center. And your center fielder will range over to make the play. Hoping that ball would get up in that jet stream and wreak some <laughs> havoc on them too. Get caught in the lights, maybe. Mess him up like you can. Hope he would lose that one in the lights, but he does not. All right, Jake Beck stepping in. He's got 11 plate appearances on the year. Couple of RBIs, run scored. He'll come back here, start things out. Down in the count of one. This one stays outside, can't get over the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch for Beck here. That one a little bit high, trying to get into the upper part of the zone. It just can't quite come low enough. We got that one on Corpus at 79 miles an hour. That's as fast as I've seen him throw. Corpus, a lefty. Swing, miss here on the 2-1 from Beck. I'll go down in the count, 2-2. Here's Beck. Goes down looking. Next up to bat number 12, Logan Penny. Looked like Beck thought it was either going to come back inside a little bit further or stay downstairs. And just caught the bottom part of the zone at the knees. See if we can get us a little two-out rally here. Avigadinas walked his first time up. And watch this one come inside for 1-0. Ball first one here two, for him. Avigadinas. Pitch 34 here for Noah Corpus. Comes back inside. Gadinas. Got to throw those hips back out of the way. 2-0. Good 
Martinez pops this one and to the right outfield and that'll go down as foul. First base range back and the right fielder slid for it and first base went up and over your outfielder. We're just lucky the three of them didn't run into each yeah. other. Yeah. Looks like the right fielder kind of knocked the breath out of himself. He's taking a second to kind of gather himself. Trying to get his yeah, he's waving off the trainer back here. Yeah, yeah. So that puts Skadinas two one. Still a little ahead here for him in the count. He'll drive this one over to second and throw to first. We'll be in time, and that'll retire the side. So we come out at the top of the second. Three up, three down for Austin High. Aikens, on the other hand, will see Lucas Kreka coming up to getting us started here in the bottom of the second when we return from Burger Field right after this. My missing teeth were in the front. I fell off a roof, messed up my teeth. I would be talking and my tooth would just fall out. That's when I turned to 8118 Dental Professionals. When I first came in, it was so welcoming. I just felt a connection, felt like family. It is worth every penny because you get that peace of mind that everything is okay. I can't stop smiling. Why wait? From implants to full mouth restoration. Go to 8118dentalimplants.com to see how we can help you smile again. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott here in the broadcast booth. Noah Corpus comes out of that top half of the second inning, throwing 36 pitches so far here tonight. On the other hand, James Be or Jake Beck rather, sorry, has thrown a third of that number so far here. And we'll see if he can continue to keep that pitch count low here for Austin High tonight. Yeah, I am locked with the board. So I got 12 pitches for yeah, Jake, 12, 36 four. for Corpus. We've got three runs on one hit, one error for Austin High. One run, one hit, one error for Akins. So 3-1-1 one, one for Austin High, 1-1-1 one, one, one for Akins. And we got to pick up our level of play yep. on defense. That one error cost you quite a bit there in the base running. You have that aspect of it. You let an out fall essentially yep. between short and second. And as discussed, that one falls more on short. Gadinas out there in that shortstop position. All right, now it's time to regroup. Pitch count is low for Jake. We'd love to see him keep it low. Defense got to stand up, help your man out. So let's we'll start, Lucas Kreka. Get us started here. He'll foul this one off. He'll start down in the count 0-1. That one fights his own. How about that? Go from 85 mile an hour fastball to 71 mile an hour curve. Again, starting at his head, breaking over. 0 2 count. This one stays low this time from James Scott, and that'll put one away. So pitcher Noah Corpus hitting in the seven hole tonight. They're just in that 
device on the back of James Scott again here. Saw that a few times uh, last week there against Buda. <laughs> yeah, well, last week that was a little bit more because Scott's throwing himself around behind the plate a little bit true. trying to get in front of these pitches. Tonight it's been he's had to make a couple of throws over to first. True. We do have a red jacket signing. <laughs> Claire and Kennedy, the red jackets, are here supporting the team. 71 mile an hour curveball starting on the outside, breaking in. I'll put Corpus down 0 1. With one away from the throw to Scott over to first. Swing and a miss here. Strike two for your starting pitcher on the other side. The 0-2, back the windup, high and outside. He had 87 on the gun on that one. Oh, boy, you won't believe this, but uh, Buda and Bowie, Buda is up 6 to nothing over Bowie. That's not what Ooh. we need. This one gets fouled off here at the plate. Six nothing in the bottom of the fourth. The one two. Beck taking his time here. Time call. And now a quick meeting again between James Scott, and Jake Beck. Trying to get on the same page. One, two. A lot of hollering here from the Aikens Bull or dugout here, but it doesn't matter. Swing and a miss. And that will send two away as down goes Corpus swinging. Never really understood why you would want to yell very loud when your own guy's in the box. <laughs> I mean, especially that kind of yelling. Yeah. You know. I would think it's more distracting than yes. anything else. Uh, you know. 100%. <laughs> but, hey, thanks for the help. Uh, yeah, Bench. you know, we won't, uh, we won't uh, argue with that. This one gets chopped oh, right back to makes Kenny. Play. Hey, how about that Kenny throw? Kenny from his seat makes a throw. Yes, over. sir. And there he how is. How about that from Logan <laughs> Kenny from his gluteus maximus, a Ken Caminetti-esque play by Logan Kenny over there at first base. Kenny had to go down for it and off balance all arm. Can't even fully rotate into the throw, and he gets it over to first in time to record the out, and that will retire the side three up. Three down, and Austin High still leading three to one going into the top of the third when we return. And how about that scoop by Luke Pazanka at first? <laughs> nice job on both ends, but heck of a play by Logan Kenny. So the Kenny to Pazanka connection gets us out of the second inning. Three to one lead. Top of the third when we return. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Welcome back in here, Burger Field, David Roy, James Scott. Watching Austin High claim a 3-1 to one lead. One of the big things we talked about coming in that second inning, trying to make sure that Beck's pitch count stays low. Where are we at? 21 pitches through two innings 
so far here for Beck. I mean, right now he's averaging just a tad over 10 pitches an inning right now. And his defense helped him out. His defense helped Logan him out Logan made that time. play over there at third that was hard hit. It's right at him, but, man, it was really hard hit ball. The drop third strike right. over here. Yep. We make throw. the throw. throw. Yep. Hey, how about that? We can make these plays. Let's have some confidence, boys. You know, one of the things we, we talked about kind of coming in over these last kind of few weeks is that lack of that swagger and that confidence from this uh, roster here. So far, finding that, right? And it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been pretty at times. But they've slowly been grinding their way back into it. And they'll come back out here. James Scott had the sacrifice one, but he'll get you started here top of the third. He'll get things going here. Check swing. Dunt come around. Puts him ahead on the count 1-0. Corpus, the 1 0 offering, swung on, missed. I'll even our strike count back up, one apiece. One ball, one strike. And let's come inside here, 2 1. Scott works way back, just a little ahead here. They'll foul this one off high and onto the roof. 2-2 two -two for him. And that'll bring the count full, 3-2. Yeah, 68 mile an hour change up in the dirt. Got a little payoff pitch here. Could sure use the leadoff man on. And that'll send him to first. So there you go. That'll walk him, Unberhagen. He walked his first at bat. We're going to have. Martinez pinch run mm -hmm. or courtesy run for Scott so he can get the gear on. Lumberjack walked and scored in the first inning. Here's Umber Hagen. Bunt gets laid down. Throw back over to first. Is in time. Pitcher had to come up and make that throw. Off that sacrifice bunt. And Osby Contreras drove in our first run in the first inning. He's up again. Yeah, had the base hit out to left. And the hustle to second. Yeah. Which Coming allowed him to come around and score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Puts Martinez at second. Here's Contreras. Check swing. Didn't come around. This one in the dirt. I'll put Contreras ahead 1 0. We got that at 60 mile an hour curveball. Mm. Corp is pretty crafty. We've seen him as high as 78 so far today. That's the slowest at 60 I've seen. The 1 0. Swing and a miss here from Contreras. That one would have been outside on the plate there. 1-1. One, one. One, Contreras. A 1-1 one, one gets fouled off here. Popped up over the roof. And into the parking lot here behind us. Uh-oh. Was not me. <laughs> A one-two count. With one away. 
Throw outside, throw to third. One nice in time. Play. Good job, Jason Martinez, picking up that stolen base. Big steal there by Martinez, gets him to third with a 2 2. Good eye. It's down inside. 3 2 count here for Osby Contreras. This will be pitch 50 for Noah Corpus with a full count here for Contreras. Had the base hit out to the left last time up. Oh. That's going to be a called strike, and down goes Contreras swinging. That was a tough call. They're looking rather, sorry. He thought that was a ball. He already started off the first because it came inside, and the umpire kind of called it a little late. Mm. That's one of those calls I almost kind of feel like you – I don't want to say you spite the hitter a little bit there, but it kind of feels like it because you. Mm. Yeah, that was tough. Two away off pitch 50, and Pizanka will foul this one off. He steps in 0 for 1 tonight. Hey, in another game that has relevance to us, Lake Travis is up 5 to nothing over Anderson in the bottom of the fourth at Lake Travis. There you go. 0 oh, 1. Pizanka with a base hit. It'll roll its way out to left. And the run from third. And Martinez will score. Next up to bat, number four, Charlie Reeves. So Charlie Reeves will come up with two outs. Yeah, and that's Pizanka's seventh RBI on the season. Mm -hmm. Here's Charlie Reeves, your second baseman. This pitch, check swing, stays to the outside. I'll put Reeves ahead here on the count 1-0. Two away. Check swing. I'm going to say he came around that time. Yeah, Reeves 0 for 1, got on on the error on the third baseman in the first inning. Mm -hmm. Kept that inning alive. That's big at bat. Mm. Called strike. That's basically the same pitch that yeah. he got Con Contreras on. At least he's being consistent. 1-2 here. Charlie Reeves. Swing. Miss. Down goes Reeves. Swinging. And that will add one to the scoreboard here for Austin High with a 4-1 to one lead going into the bottom of the third when we return. And Jake Beck, your ace, back to the mound on the other side. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott. Appreciate everybody tuning in, joining us this evening here. Live from Burger Field. We have, it's on the YouTube channel. It was a 7.45 start time. We actually started a little bit earlier. I got about 7.38 down on my uh, notepad here that we officially got things started, so we open up a little bit early, part due to the first game ahead of us. Technically, it was originally slated for 7.30, so to go by that, we're a little late. Austin High up 4-1 to one now, in part because the run scored. Scott got on with a walk. 
And then it was Luke Pizanka with a base hit to drive that run home when Jason Martinez was in courtesy running for James Scott. We've got Aiden Tenenberg, Tenberg, their second baseman. He is in the nine hole, so we'll flip back to the top of the lineup after this one. Pretty early, quick little discussion there between Scott and Beck. Four runs on two hits, one error by Austin High, one run on one hit, one error by Akins. And Beck, first one comes in a little high, 1-0. Lined up throw. Down low, stays outside. It's a 2 0. Man, I don't know how that's not distracting for you as a hitter when you have your <laughs> entire dugout just hollering like that. Like, I guess you're trying to throw off the pitcher, but yeah. I think it's harder on you as a batter because it's a, it's a sensory overload. You're trying to concentrate <laughs> on the pitch, and especially here in this situation because you've got Tenberg looking at him. Yeah. In this spot, I would yell if Austin High, I don't, you know what, I, I won't say anything. Maybe we're old. Uh, so the 3-0 comes back 3-1. Here's back pitch 26 here. Up high. And that will send Tenberg over to first on the walk. And I'll take you back here to the top of the first. J.P. Perez got on base in part because of the air from the catcher here. And James Scott, his throw just too high over to first on the swinging strikeout. And that allowed Perez to take first and his run would score. It would be the only one to score for Aikens there in the first. Speaking of first, Beck comes off the mound, make the throw over that way to Pizanka. See if we can't turn it up the middle. Kenny's in expecting a bunt as he squares. And there it is, a quick bunt. Beck, scoop, throw to first in time. And that... A little fielder's choice there. But you take the easy out. And that'll put one away. On Ramos. Ground down. It's a 70 mile an hour sharp breaking curve, maybe a slider. Very tight break. 1 swung on, missed here by Ramos. That'll put him down in the count 0 2. The 0 2 pitch. Does not find the zone. 86 high. So overthrowing a little bit on that one, maybe. Well, 1 2, wild pitch, pass ball. They would really be a pass ball there. 2-2. Two, two. You know it better than I would. You can tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I believe that hit the dirt, which is why it hit off his shin guards, which is why it ricocheted so much. Yeah. One of those, it's kind of a little bang, bang, bang kind of play. It can be kind of hard to tell sometimes. 
The 2-2. Two -two. That one coming in. Eye level. Yeah, that curve just didn't break as much as what Jake wanted. Again, he's starting that big hook at their heads and having it drop over, and that one just didn't break over quite as much. A full count. Ramos will step out. Infield in here. Little surprising with the three-run lead. Back, wind up. Let's say fouled that off. Yeah, it certainly didn't hit his hands, or he'd be screaming uh. in pain. <laughs> I've done that before. So full count here, the three two. Fouls that one off as well. So we talked about that pitch count staying pretty low. Well, it is climbing up right now for Jake Beck. He's up to 34. And that one, the ball will walk Ramos over to first. For the Eagles, number 11, Dave Cisneros. So Cisneros. The base umpire is talking to the third base coach of Aikens. Only thing I can imagine there is they're talking about maybe Jake not pausing. And he's asking for a balk. See how this plays. Well, I'm seeing him talking with the dugout here a little bit. That hooting and hollering has died down a little bit. I'm thinking that's what that conversation was for. Mm. Got the universal kind of throat slash kind of motion of cut it out. Down. Yeah. <laughs> So Cisneros, 0-1. Oh, it didn't last very long. <laughs> Throw back over to first. One away. Runners at the corners. No one for snares. He'll pop this one into the gap over to the short right. And coming up here. Taking with the throw. So runner will score and then runners advance. Put him back at the corners here. Looks like Vasquez is courtesy running in. Yeah. It's the same scenario here, first and third. Love to turn a double play right here, get Jake out of this. It's a cool night here at the ballpark at Burger Stadium, so no issues with fatigue. Back to wind up here. That's 86 right in the dirt. Nice job by Sarge to block that one. The 1-0. through. Kenny came charging at the plate. 
Yeah, it's a dangerous one. Logan came charging because the guy showed, showed bond. bond. Then Kenny he charges, and then yeah. he pulls back, swings, and it gets past Kenny. And then we're having a little play at the plates here. The throw gets past Kenny, and that will allow a runner advance home. It got past Logan Kenny. And really quickly here, Akins has tied this up. kind of brought the entire infield in and together, and they discussed that. Yeah, we left third base place. unoccupied, yep. so the runner at second just bolted for third, third, and then Jake is throwing to a moving target and did not make a good throw or throw at least that Kenny was able to handle. Well, and they made a throw back to second because he ran back and got caught up, I guess, in the base paths and a little bit of chaos here. This one gets popped high and over the cage. 0-2. You know, we're charging aggressively, uh, and there's one out. I'd almost uh, charge not as aggressively, let them bunt it, get the out, no. and then – Get the, the batter out, and you're out of this inning. This one gets popped right back to back. Back, throw to first. Good play. Puts two away. You know, Jake really fields his position well. Mm -hmm. Been a couple of those so far for Beck tonight where he's come up, scooped it, made the throw over to first. That's the second one time he's done that this inning. <laughs> Two away here, runner at second. And that skips off. Did it hit him? I say it didn't hit. Just a wild pitch there that'll allow the runner to advance. To third, and Daniel Salas currently at the plate right now. Lucas Kroika. The 1 0. <laughs> Fouls this one off into the cage directly behind him. One one on the count here. Beck up to forty four pitches here tonight. This one slips through the runner advances. That'll score the run on the base hit from Croeca in part because Charlie Reeves bobbled it. Couldn't field it cleanly. And just like that. In the matter of a bottom half of an inning, Akins takes a 5-4 to four lead. Rather, 0 1. No, Corpus here at the plate. Two away. So, got a little bit of a two out rally going here right now for Akins. Throw back to first.
0-1. They did score that a error. Throw to second is in time. So that'll do it. So we come out of this third inning. Things have changed very quickly here. Aikens now with a 5-4 to four lead. Four runs scored in part. Three hits, but more importantly, three errors committed uh, in total on the night. Two of them this inning alone here for Austin High. Beck is up to 47 pitches. Thrown here tonight for comparison, no corpus. Only ahead 56 pitches, so a bit of a longer third inning there. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we return in the top of the fourth. Mance Orthodontics is committed to providing the highest quality orthodontics for the Austin community. Dr. Nance is a board-certified orthodontist and offers Invisalign and braces to create beautiful smiles. Our friendly team is passionate about creating beautiful, life-changing smiles for all ages. With the latest technological advances, patient comfort and happiness are our highest priority. Give us a call for your complimentary consultation today. You're watching Austin High Baseball on Vibe Live Network. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott here in the booth. And so we'll kind of recap that bottom third here for you a little bit. So that was a bit of a wild third inning when you get down there. Four runs scored, two of them in part because of errors. Two errors committed by Austin High there in the bottom of the third, allowing... Akins to not only tie this game up, but take a one-run lead here coming into the top of the fourth. Yeah, man, it's uh, we've got to play better defense. We've talked about that. That was uh, that was tough. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say about that. We've yeah. got to make some of those plays. It's four runs on two hits, three errors by Austin High, five runs on three hits, one error by Akins. Drew Anderson will lead you off here, top of the fourth. And, and, James, one of the things we talked about in that early window and even pregame a little bit, and it, unfortunately, based on the goings here tonight, it's something we're still waiting on. And that's that complete game yeah. from this Austin High team. And, you know, if last week it wasn't necessarily fielding or, or hitting as much as it was the pitching, and, and we come in here tonight, Pitching has been pretty good here from Beck tonight, I would say. Hitting has done well. You've scored four. But your fielding tonight, as evidenced by three errors overall, has caused uh, a little bit of a problem for you here tonight. Anderson right now down in the count, one, two. Oh, my gosh. That looked inside. Wow. We're sitting right behind home plate. He run Drew up on a fastball inside part of the plate. Yeah, and Anderson doesn't swing at it. Like you said, it's inside. So for Drew Anderson, he's thinking that staying to that inside part doesn't think it's going to come over the plate, and they're going to say it just clips that edge just enough. Patrick Bird comes up and gets going with a swing and a miss. Down 0-1. There you go. There he Drop. is, Bird. Yes, sir. Into the left field, and Patrick Bird with a base hit. Here you go, Patrick. Little line drive, single left. Up to that number 23, Jake Beck. Wonder if Grandma Bird, Hazel Bird's watching. I'm sure she loved that one. If you are watching, give us a shout out. HS Maroon Baseball at gmail.com. We got 30 different devices streaming with us today. Drop, drop, drop. This one yes, sir. Oh, yeah, he's touching. There. Wait, that's a double play. What are we doing? Wow. Oh, my gosh. 
That is awful base running. I'm sorry. Jake Beck did a good job getting that ball down. And the pitcher comes over, touches the ball, so it's a fair ball at that point. Right. Bird, I believe, anticipated it being foul, did not take off, and that goes came, down yeah, as a double play. Yeah, he came play. back over to first, so you have that, that, that double play there at first. And so that'll retire the side really, really quick inning there to get you going there in the top of the fourth. Three up, three down, Anderson Bird in that back in that order. And like you said, it's the base running that does you in there. So Jake Beck will come out here to the mound, and that's a really quick inning when you talk about it for uh, Noah Corpus out there to kind of give you a reference there. Come down only seven, eight pitches there thrown in that half inning so well more importantly it doesn't give jake enough time to, to really re catch rest him. exactly breath, you know especially after a long inning there yep. for him the tide has certainly changed the dynamic has changed we'll take a quick break be right back do you need a haircut a real haircut one that's tapered or blocked clipped or trimmed just the way you like it Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525 to schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop, an Austin institution. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott, live here in the broadcast booth from Burger Field, Austin High. Started this night about as strongly as you could have hoped for to get a, a night going, and that has quickly gone to the wayside. This game has seemingly been turned on its head. All the momentum has shifted to the Aikens dugout at this point. They've got the 5-4 to four lead right now and are back to the plate. Leading off here with Ryan Resendez here and the last two hitters of the lineup. And he'll take this first one outside part of the plate, 0-1. That's an 88-mile-an-hour fastball on the corner. Mm. The 0-1 comes back inside down low. To your point, David, we've got to find it within ourselves to come back. It'd be a big confidence boost for the guys to come win this one. Yeah. Feel bad for Patrick on that ball because I, as soon as the bunt's up in the air, you're thinking, protect yourself, don't get doubled up. It did not work. But let's get three quick outs. Here we got a foul ball to take the count to one and two. Let's get uh, some outs right here and come back and get our sticks going. One, two here on the strike count. Here's Resendez. There you go. Swing, miss, one away to open up the Number bottom of the fourth. Number seven, Ryan Resendez. Looking forward to the fifth inning. We do have the top of the order up. That's great. We're at the eight hole for Aikens right now. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I got a little bit ahead of myself here. I had was looking at Resendez, and it was actually Corpus up to get things started. Resendez at the plate now. That's another 88-mile-an-hour fastball as well. 1-0 here. Here's Resendez. Shows bunt. Followed by a 73 mile an hour curve starting at your head and breaking over. 1 1 on the count here. You know, as well as Jake has pitched, he's got to be really frustrated being down in this game. Yeah. Because it's not really on him. Back the 1 1 wind up. This one popped up. Back. Quick throw. 
There he is, fielding again, and that's another quick out. So two away really quickly here into the bottom of the fourth. Again, he comes over, fields his position cleanly. This will be pitch number 55 for Mr. Beck. That's going to stay outside there. Don't quite break back in over the plate there. 1-0. Two away. Here's Beck. The 1 0 wind up and offering. Comes back in. That's what he wanted the first time around. Breaks it back in. 1 1. The 1 1 wind up. Down low at the ankles. I'll put Tenberg ahead on the count, 2-1. Two away. The wind up. Back. This one fouled off. 2-2 two -two on the count. Clear, beautiful night sky. Wind blowing across, still wanting to carry things over into left field. Wow. 85 at the top of the zone, man. A lot of people wanted that, yeah. including my broadcast partner. Just that top part of the zone there. Full count, 3-2. Swing, miss, and that will retire the side. So quick inning there for Beck. That puts him up to pitch number 60. Before we retire the side, going in top of the fifth inning here, Akins has still got that one-run lead. Austin High, four runs, three hits, three errors. Akins, five runs, three hits, and only the one error. And that, those two errors, really the difference maker right now in this one. Top of the fifth, when we return, you're watching the Austin High live stream on YouTube. When we come back. Real estate companies come and go in Central Texas about as fast as the wildflowers in spring. But when you're looking for a house, you're looking for a place to put down roots, a place to call home for years to come, which means you need a realtor with roots in the community like Tate Property. Tate Property is a family-owned real estate brokerage located in Terrytown. We grew up here, we live here, and we work here, representing buyers and sellers of Austin's finest luxury homes, investment properties, and farm and ranch retreats. This is our passion. Give Tate Property a call at 512-474-8283. That's 512-474-TATE. Or look up online at tateproperty.com and let us know how we can help you today. Tate Property, exceptional homes, exceptional service. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott here in the broadcast booth. Been a bit of an interesting night here. Austin High starts out strong. You come out of the first inning, you've got a 3-1 lead. Things look good. Second inning goes by. You come in, top of the third, you come out of there. It's 4-1. But then that bottom of the third inning, Akins rattles off four. Two errors committed by Austin High. You come back, you're now down 5-4. to four. Scoreless fourth inning brings us now into the top of the fifth. Back at the top of the lineup as well. Javi Godinez, one of two here tonight from the plate. And he's going to start this night with a pop out all the way out into shallow center. 
Your second baseman ranges back to get underneath it. And that'll be one away. Swing and a miss here from Scott. Puts him down on the count 0-1. Second button the first, walk to lead off the third. And this one, call that foul. Foul down the line at third. Hey, another score around the league. Buda still on top of Bowie, seven to nothing in the top of the sixth. Lake Travis still on top of Anderson, five to one, also in the sixth. 0-2 count here for the Sarge. One away in Javi Godinez. And that'll be two away as down goes Sarge swinging. You end up having Godinez out over to second. So, um, Scott goes down swinging. Corpus had that pause at the top of his leg kick to try to throw off the timing yeah. of Sarge. Perfectly legit. I don't know how, if that had any impact <laughs> or not, but that was unique. Of course, you can't do that with a runner on because that'd right. be a balk. Yeah. But swing and a miss here to Lumberjack. Lumberjack sack bunted last time, walked and scored in the first. He'll come back here 1-1 one, one on the count with two away. Corpus up to 70. This is 71 on Verhagen. That's a massive pop-up foul. Way high, and it'll hit the stands there on the right field for space sign, just behind the Austin High dugout. If we had any clouds in the sky, that would brought rain. <laughs> Corpus has retired. A pitch way inside there in Unberhagen. Six in a row. See if Lumberjack can break the string here. 2-2 two, two count. Two away, Unberhagen. Fouls off this one. This will come up. It will go into the parking lot. Hope nobody parked in that first row. It's a 2-2 count. And Umberhagen fouls this one off. So you're building back up that that pitch count there a little bit for Noah Corpus. But more importantly, on the other side, you're giving Jake back a little bit of a chance to recalibrate here. Yeah, 100% we need to do that. Let him get off his feet a little bit, get a glass of water. Two two. Oh, there you That'll go. Take one hit the Lumberhagen. There you go. Way to go, Lumberjack. That'll Didn't bounce hurt. off his right hip. And that'll put him on first with Osby Contreras coming up. He went down Osby looking his Contreras. last time up, thinking he had a ball. Singled though, had that base hit back in the first inning. And we got about a hundred folks watching us, a little bit more than that, on thirty two different devices. I only have five likes, so if you could, do us a favor. Take a second. Give us a like. We want to be liked here. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the Maroon YouTube channel. It comes in as a ball. Yeah, it was a check swing there by Contreras, but stayed inside. Just a little bit high, but it doesn't come over the corner of the plate there either. That one stays low, just below the knees for Contreras. But again... Stays inside, so Contreras gets ahead here a little bit. 2-0. Let's see if he can't pull off a little two-out rally here. Hand the count 2-0, see something, swing at it. That's what he does right here. Drives this one high into the air. And it falls through, gets past short. Oh, it hits oh. Coach A. 
Oh, it's no. Coach A. Safe. 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 Yes. 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 Holy Toledo. What a play by Lumberjack. Hauling it home. I think the ball, they, uh, I'm hoping they're not calling back. It did hit Coach A. What a crazy play. They're still discussing this. I think it's going to stand. That's legit. He did not do anything to intentionally get in the way of the ball. It is safe, and we have a tie ball game, folks. Umberhagen comes all the way around. It's a huge base hit from Osby Contreras in a short center. Well, they're scoring it uh, an error. So, so technically, folks, just so everybody's on the same page, the district is the official book here. So if yep. what you see on this scoreboard out there, it's not me, it's not my broadcast nope, partner. Nope. The district calls that, and they call that an error to short on dropping that ball. Yep. That's a tough error. Well, he didn't even fully have it in the glove to drop it, just well, take it underneath it. But, you know, he was in position to make the play. I personally would have scored that a base hit because he was yeah. running away. It was sort of the yeah. Willie Mays kind of play there. Either way, doesn't matter. Run scores, tied game here, five apiece. And Pizanka comes down, 0-1, comes back. Ball one here, evens up the count. No corpus up to 80 pitches thrown here. That's a 20 pitch difference between him and Beck right now. Here's corpus for 81. Wind up inside. Boy, that's Can't the find same the zone again. pitch that he called Drew Anderson out on earlier. Yeah. 2 1. Two away and a runner at second and Contreras. Contreras, of course, DHing tonight for Logan Kenny. Swing, miss there by Pizanka. It's a 2 2. With two away. Corpus, the windup on the 2 2, a little bit high. Full count. Three 2 count here for Luke Pizanka. Fouls this one off. The foul bounce off <laughs> the umpire. He right in the gut. Yeah. Solid, too. Chest protector, albeit. Yep. <laughs> See him giving thumbs up round bases here. Make sure the eight's fine. <laughs> Full count for Pizanka. Wind up. Good eye. That'll walk Pizanka. Way to go, cool hand Luke. So runners at first and second. And a substitution here. Yep, John Latham. So in comes John Latham in the place of Charlie Reeves. And he'll start 1-0. Latham only his eighth plate appearance this season, and he's battled back from some injuries. Sustained in football, he is our quarterback, QB1 on the Maroon football team. He'll foul off the 1-0. Been working on getting his timing back.
great opportunity to have a little base hit here. A 1-1. One, one. That pitch count for Corpus getting driven up here pretty well. That's going to catch. They're going to say it's the outside part of the zone. Yeah, I he, wouldn't have agreed with it, but again, I'm not behind the catcher directly. I'm not in blue. Yeah, it's 65 mile an hour curveball started on the outside, and he's saying caught that corner. Mm -hmm. Got to protect the plate here. One, two. Here's Latham. Ah. Swings, misses, goes down swinging. That'll retire the side, but not before the tying run scores. And we're all tied up, five apiece, going into the bottom of the fifth. And Jake Beck, return to the mound. Five all when we return here from Burger Field. My missing teeth were in the front. I fell off a roof, messed up my teeth. I would be talking and my tooth would just fall out. That's when I turned to 8118 Dental Professionals. When I first came in, it was so welcoming. I just felt a connection, felt like family. It is worth every penny because you get that peace of mind that everything is okay. I can't stop smiling. Why wait? From implants to full mouth restoration. Go to 8118dentalimplants.com to see how we can help you smile again. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott here in the broadcast booth. David had noticed that John Latham stayed in the game. He's now yep. at second base. So take Charlie Reeves' place. Other than that, the defense remains the same. Pazanka's at first. Latham, as we said, is at second. Godinas at short. Logan Kinney at third. Patrick Bird in left, Drew Anderson in center, and the Lumberjack who scored the tying run out there in right, yeah. and your battery stays the same with Beck and Scott. So right now, here's where things stand. Five hits for Austin High, or excuse me, five runs Austin High, three hits, three errors. Aikens on the other Aikens hand, five runs, runs three, three hits, two Please. errors. Three. So things closing the gap here a little bit for Austin High. And we've got a little bit of a change here. This is not Perez coming up to the plate right now. We've got this as Crank, Cody Crank. So number 24, Cody Crank. Comes up here to the plate to lead off. I think I'm down taking the place of Perez here. So here's Crank. High. That's what we call a sportsman's barbershop close shave. <laughs> Had it made contact, I would have recommended he visit Terrytown Pharmacy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> a lot of meds there at Terrytown Pharmacy. A couple of Advil, that ping, go long gone. Oh, uh, he, that hit. Maybe he does need to make a visit to Terrytown Pharmacy. Catch him off the back of the shoulder blades. Next up to bat, number one, Sean Ramos. Be a courtesy runner in Perez. Yeah, it's we'll Perez come back in. To courtesy run. Bit of a unique little situation there. Not often in a tie game you pinch run or pinch hit, I should say, for your leadoff yeah. hitter. Yeah, but I kind of found that to be a little interesting. <laughs> like that's a that's a strange turn of events. John Ramos. Sean Bunt, he'll lay it down. It's on the line. Foul. Foul. There you go. That's heads up play by Logan Kenny. <laughs> he came for it. I don't know if Beck called him off it or if Kenny had the wherewithal himself, but whatever the case, well done. Kenny does not touch it, lets it sit on the line, and it comes back. Yeah. 
So, I mean, that's smart play by Kenny. He had no chance, basically, when that ball was going down. His only opportunity he had is to let it go foul. And there must have been grass, green grass in yep. between the ball and the foul line because the umpire was right on top of it, and the yeah, ball I was mean, not moving at that yeah, point. Yeah, he came down that third base line, staring it down, and ultimately rolled it foul. So, 0-1, runner at first. You're hearing it from both sides of the crowd right now. Some like it, some hate it. You can guess which side is which on that. I'm on the side that likes it. Yeah, you know, since they both share the field, I don't know how the home cooking works a little bit here. But <laughs> it is a good crowd. Yeah, A couple hundred people out here tonight. Plus 100 or so watching us. Throw over to Short. And say safe. Scott made a heck of an effort throw there to get it over to Gadinas coming over, but well, he picked a great pitch to run on on a curveball that was swinging a miss, so you had to deal with the obstruction from the uh, batter. Not that that was that didn't really play. Right. It's not illegal. I mean, it's just part of what you have to deal with. This one gets fouled off into the cage here behind the plate. So stay 0-2. Wonder if we'll see Corpus be done here tonight. He's up to 89 pitches. Or if they'll let him keep going. Something to monitor when we come back to for the oh. top of the six. There, another hit by pitch. And Beck, you can see, frustrated. All right, Coach A is coming out to talk to Beck. He's only at 66 pitches. We just yep. got to get him calmed down and great opportunity to throw a, a pair, roll a pair, yeah. throw a double play. conversation there with Coach A and Scott as well. So you had it, and it looked like initially it was just going to be a, a full infield meeting there with Beck after that one because it bounced off the back hip here. And you did see Coach A walk out, have that conversation. Just kind of settled Beck in. And in part, you, you like to see that there, especially because Beck visibly frustrated off the mound there and just yeah. kind of get him to settle in, relax a little bit. He's throwing a heck of a ball game right here. Runners at first and second, tied game, five runs apiece. Can understand how would his emotions get the best of him. We got to settle down and he's getting out. He went for it. Yes, sir. Good call by Blue. Square around the bunt. Yep. He definitely went for it. We saw him kind of push that forward, trying to make that contact, and it just comes over the top of the barrel there. 0-1. Sean Bunt, Pizanka, charging the plate. I'll come back, 1-1. One, one. Back up to 68 thrown. A 69 here. This one gets fouled off. 1-2. Dave Cisneros working here at the plate. Down one, two here in the count. Let's be pitch 70 from Jake Beck. Wind up. Swing. Oh, boy. What a time for a pass ball. Yeah. That is uncharacteristic. So Came right in 
Fastball right over the plate. Not sure what happened with Sarge to miss that one. Well, and now they're saying he is out because they sent him back to the dugout. Yeah, 100% he's out. He swung and missed. Yeah. They didn't call it a foul ball. Uh, it's just it's a wild little night here. You had the conversation with Coach A. And for whatever reason, though, Cisneros thinking he gets to run off to first. <laughs> for whatever reason. I think he's saying it was a drop, drop. Uh, pitch, and it wasn't a drop pitch. Yeah. It was 100% a pass ball. I put a lot of pressure more on Jake. We need a pop-up or a strikeout right here. Base hit, scores two. He'll come back, throws one high, 1-0. One -oh. One away. That one. Call that foul. Hmm. That looked like it bounced off its chest. Okay. Should be 1-1. One, one. Beck, wind up, throw, 2-1 there, can't get Daniel Salas to go chasing it outside. Infield in to cut off the run at the plate. 2-1 count. This one swung on, missed. 86. 2-2. Strikeout here would go a long way for Beck. That went high outside. You got that one in at 88 miles an hour. Yeah. I've seen Jake hit 89 before. Back, back from the windup, the pitch in the dirt. It's in the dirt, so it's going to walk him. Let's see if we don't move Latham and Godinus back to turn it up the middle. That looks like exactly what Coach A is going to do. Yeah. Corners will stay in, so Pazanka and Kenny, their plays at home. Godinus and Latham will turn it up the middle. A big moment in this game. Back working from the windup. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, 83. Little cutter. 0-1 here on the count for Ariano. Bunt laid down. Kenny, the scoop. Flick of the wrist to Latham. Little safety squeeze there. Yeah. Scores. That'll make it six to five here. Aikens leading. And o two. A one zero rather. Two away. Here's Beck, the 1 0 wind up. Yes, Finds the inside part of the plate there. Yes, Set inside corner, 1 1. Yes, 
swing, miss, one, two. One pitch away from getting out of this with yeah. and limiting the damage. This one popped high in a gap in right center. Jack Cumberhagen gets underneath it and that'll retire the side. The Lumberjack comes over and puts an end to the inning and Aikens comes away with a run scored in response to Austin High in the top of the fifth. We're all back out. Aikens 6-5 here over Austin High. And the Maroons will look to respond here when we come back for the top of the sixth. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott. We've got a little change up here going on, both for the mound and, James, you point out there in the break, for the outfield as well because Ryan Resendez coming in to take the place of Corpus. Corpus finishing his night here with 89 pitches thrown. He doesn't quite get to 90, and Ryan Resendez will take his place yeah, we have the book on Corpus. He does stand to pick up the win if this score holds. Corpus five runs through 88 pitches is what I had. You had 89, I believe. Gave up, board had him at 89. Gave, he, gave up three hits, five runs, two earned, four walks, seven, struck out, seven strikeouts, and hit a batter. So for the Maroons, we have Drew Anderson, center fielder, stepping in. Drew 0 for 2 in the evening. Be a great time for a leadoff. Yeah. Anything positive, <laughs> any way possible, yeah. Drew. Leadoff walk, leadoff hit, leadoff error. Let's start with a foul. Well, he's got good speed, too. First base playing a little bit back. If I was him, I'd be about half tempted to push a little bunt down first base line, see if I can run it out. He's got good speed. He's a heck of an athlete. I wonder if that's a conversation Coach A's having with him right now, noting that same thing. Now this is becoming a lengthy conversation. Just like that, it's no longer a lengthy conversation. Conversation's over. Enough talk. The 0 1 fouled off into the cage. 0 2. Tying run at the plate right now. If he can just get on base. Swing, miss. That's one away. Up the back of the Maroons, number six, Patrick Bird. All right, that brings up Patrick Bird. He's one for two. He singled last time up. He got caught in no man's land on that uh, pop-up bunt by yeah. Beck. Takes that one on the inside corner. 76 mile an hour fastball. Oh, one part. Yeah. 
Swing, miss there. That'll put him down 0-2. Swing and a miss. It's two away. All right, Henry Shooter stepping in, pitch hitting for Beck. Yep. Beck can still come back into the game. Two away on six pitches right now for Ryan Resendez. This is Henry's 13th game played. He'll start with a swing there and a miss. Puts him down in the count 0-1. Got 24 at-bats. Double two RBIs. One run scored. That one's down inside and in the dirt. 1-1 one, one count here for Shooter. A wind up, swing and a miss on the 1-1. One, one. Shooter down now on the count, 1-2. Two. two away. Top of the sixth. Aikens leading 6-5. This doesn't quite find that outside part of the zone. Doesn't come over the plate. So if you're a shooter, you got to choke up, expect that hook again, and if he throws a fastball for a strike, just foul it off. Watch this hook stay outside. 3-2. So a couple breaking balls that can't stay over the plate, just break a little too far outside. You're trying to get him to chase, and shooter doing a good job not doing so. This one, shooter, contact. Driven out, and the line out to right field. And that will retire the sign. So bottom of the sixth coming up here. And the question will be who will take the mound? We'll find out when we return. Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott here in the broadcast booth. It will be Jake Beck back on the mound here. But we do have a defensive change. As out comes running Jason Martinez to take over left field. So Martinez will take the place of Patrick Bird. Yeah, so your outfield looks like Martinez, Anderson, and Umberhagen from left to right. Infield stays the same. Pazanka, Latham, Godinas, and Kenny. Mm -hmm. As does your battery with Beck and Scott. Looking ahead to the top of the seventh. We'll have our top of the order. Godinas, yep. Scott, and Umberhagen up. It looks like we have a pinch hitter for them, number eight, Hayden Fonseca. It's taking the place of Corpus. Tonight is done, of course, here. So Jake Beck, pitch 83, comes up high, and that'll go ball one. That sounded like a sigh of exasperation. Just a touch. Just a touch. Hey, Buda's on top of Bowie, 10 to 2. 
Not what you need there. That'll be a sigh of relief. 1-1. One, one. I don't know what uh, Buta did, but they put it together last three yeah. games. Yeah. A 1-1 one, one count. Quick meeting there with Scott and Beck. The 1-1, one, one. wind up, swung on, missed. 1-2. The 1-2 wind up, swung on, missed. And Fonsaka will go down swinging. That is Beck's eighth strikeout on the evening in five and a third innings. This one crunched in a deep left center. Oh, he over Drew Anderson over-pursued it. And he made the throw, trying to make the cutoff throw over to second. That is a massive triple from Ryan Resendez. Yeah, he got every bit of that ball. And Drew was there. He just over-pursued it a little. Not sure if he lost it in the lights or, or what have you, but like you said, he's, he's making the run over to the fence and – it ends up dropping in just behind him. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change yep. to Fletcher Wilson. So Jake Beck's night is through. 87 pitches thrown for him officially. Yeah, we'll come back and get the book on him as we take a look at Fletcher. Fletcher Wilson, Jr., Comes in, 15 and two-thirds innings thrown. Three wins, one loss. No saves, no save opportunities. Mm -hmm. Eight hits given up. Nine runs, seven of those earned. Walked seven, struck out 17. Hit two batteries. He's got a 3.13 ERA and a whip of less than one. Whip, again, is walks and hits divided by innings pitched. That's a 0 0.957 by Fletcher. Pretty good. Five runs for the Maroons, three hits, three errors. Aikens, six runs, four hits, two errors. Mm Back so far, five and a third innings, 85 pitches, 57 for strikes. I think it's 87 pitches, actually. 59 for strikes, four hits, gave up six runs, only four earned, and it really shouldn't have been four earned. Three walks, eight strikeouts, hit two batters. Looks like Akins is going to have another pinch hitter. Yep. Pinch hitter for Tenberg. Looks like that'll be number 13, Aiden DeLeon. Runner on third. But one away. One away. Infield was probably going to play in. We need a pop up. Or a strikeout right yep. here. Here's Fletcher Wilson. To get the night started. 
65 mile an hour curveball called strike. It's a big one. No, and unlike Beck, Wilson right now, his curve's got a little more of that up-down, that vertical position change. That one is 69 mile an hour one. Goes for strike two. Little inside there. In the dirt. The one, two. This one. That'll go foul out into left field. So count remains one, two. One away, runner still at third. Aikens leaning, 6-5. Swing and a miss. You get your strikeout swinging. 82-mile-an-hour fastball. Way to change speeds, Fletcher Wilson. And Perez is back in. He, I believe he went out to center field when Resendez came in. So two away, this one high. I level there. I'll go for ball one. Foul ball. Fouls Hit off, off there. Right off the knob of the bat. So the 1 1 count. Fletcher Wilson, the wind up. That one off the helmet. Hey, wait, wait. Next up to bat, number one, Sean Ramos. So out will come Sean Ramos. Ramos 0 for 1. Walked in the third and scored and got on on a hit by pitch in the fifth. Yeah, Scott out there, full infield meeting right now. Yeah, I expect some first and third double steal or yeah. some sort of play as close as this game is. Runners at the corners. And up comes Sean Ramos. Hit by pitch last time out. Got him on base. And he walked back in the third. After grounding out in the first. Wilson. They're, you're playing right into their hand. Don't do this. That's why you don't do it. Wow. The, the ball's still in play, gentlemen. That's exactly why you don't. They. Oh, my gosh. They goaded him into that. Five seven lead here for Akins. There's a run from third scores. Thanks to the throw from Wilson throws to first. Runners in the base pads, they throw to second. And that allows a run from third to score and give Akins a two run lead. This one comes inside. A little bit closer on Sean Ramos. Called it a strike. Ow. Yes. Yes, indeed. 0-1. Wilson, this one, fouled off down the third base line, 0-2. But two away. That previous play, they were going to lead. I'm kind of surprised their runner went back to first when he – he got uh, picked off. That was intentional all the way. Yes, Swing and strikeout, and Scott just runs him down on the base pads. But runs score, 
puts a lot of stress here on Austin High, but the good news, top of the lineup, down two in the top of the seventh when we return. Nance Orthodontics is committed to providing the highest quality orthodontics for the Austin community. Dr. Nance is a board certified orthodontist and offers Invisalign and braces to create beautiful smiles. Our friendly team is passionate about creating beautiful, life-changing smiles for all ages. With the latest technological advances, patient comfort and happiness are our highest priority. Give us a call for your complimentary consultation today. Welcome back in. David Roy, James Scott here from Burger Field. Top of the seventh. And Aikens now nursing a 7-5 to five lead over Austin High. Ryan Resendez in relief of no corpus. He's thrown... 13, they've got him up on the board here so far. We need to get some runners on and score. We had no other option. Now, Javi Godinas is going to be your leadoff man here to get you started. Walked in the first, but he's grounded out his last two. Uh, ground out and a line out, rather, but... Let's go, Maroons. We need this one. Here's Javi Godinez. From the plate, Resendez. That one nearly hit Godinez. He had to actually suck his way back towards the plate to avoid the hit by pitch. A bit wild out there. A 1 0. Down low at the ankles. Goes for 2 0. Two balls, no strikes here for Javi Godinez. Resendez, this one. Drop. Godinez, Ugh. line out to center. He hit that ball square. Hit it cleanly, just couldn't get it to sit down there in front of center field. And James Scott going to have him over. Call time, quick call, talk with Coach A. Jack Humberhagen on deck. Just got to get on base by any means necessary. That's going to go for 0-1, find the zone. Your tying run is on deck. If you could just get Scott and Humberhagen onto the pass. That's going to go down 0-2. Finally, out part, outside part of the zone. One away off the line out from Godinez to center. This one, base hit. That one skips off the dirt of the infield, and James Scott will round his way over to first off the base hit. He had hit off the back grass dirt. Area there, and there's such a lip here. The bird yeah, just stand bounced, it shot stand up, up about 40 feet in the air. Left field comes underneath it. Up comes Jack Unberhagen. Unberhagen hit by pitch his last time out. Walked in the first. He is also the tying run. This one down in the dirt at the ankles. That'll go for 1 0. And as you said, tying run. Right now at the plate. Jack Unverhagen. We have to be disciplined up here and on the bases. We need two runs. One doesn't do us any good. 1-0. It'll come back 2-0. Staying high and outside. Here's Unbehagen. Swing, miss, Scott, slide down. Safe. 
little close. Here's Ryan Resendez, pitch 22, fouled off. I'm actually surprised Coach A sent him there. <laughs> I mean, that's the difference between being two outs and down, you know, down two and yeah. one out runner in scoring position. But again, that run doesn't mean that much. You need two to tie. Your tying run is at the plate. Umber Hagen calls time. And he's going to back up here. Got a 2 2 count here. Scott with steel second. Puts him in scoring position. Fouled off. I thought I heard contact. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a foul ball. Foul Catcher's foul call. Foul. Foul. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. We're down to Contreras. Contreras one for three on the night. He's your tying run now. Stay within yourself. Don't Ozzie try to Contreras. do too much. Wild pitch there. That'll allow Scott to advance to third. 1-0 count. Osby's up over 300 on the season now. Came into the game even 300. He's one for three here. I pitch above the zone, 2-0. Osby Contreras is your tying run here at the plate. Scott, the runner at third. Down low and outside, 3-0. Sign of maturity, not chasing that pitch. Mm -hmm. Good job as a sophomore. So quick timeout called here between Sendez and your catcher. Dave Snares. Osby Contreras. Favorable count here for him, 3-0. Three balls, no strikes. Osby Contreras. There you go. That'll send him over to first on the walk. Nice job. Nice at bat. Now you got the tying run on base. First and third, you got two outs. Cool hand Luke Pazanka up. One for two on the evening. He would be the leading run. Most important is that he drives in your tying runs. Contreras has got speed. Here's Pizanka. Down outside. 1-0. Good discipline there by Pizanka, taking the 1-0. That's going to stay outside part of the zone. And call that a strike, 1-1. One, one. Two away. Here's Luke Pizanka. Pizanka calls time. Resendez out. 29 pitches, 17 this inning. One one. Pizanka chops that right back to center. Well, that'll do it. Bounced over the head of Resendez. Second base coming over and makes the grab, tags the base, and that'll do it. 
And that's the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give these wow. guys a round of applause for a heck of a game tonight. That is a shame. We drop the opener of the series to Akins. After getting out to a three to nothing lead in yep. the top of the first. Reminiscent of last Tuesday's game against Buda. Buda. Akins will improve to two and eight in district. That'll drop Austin High to one and seven. And we still wait for that complete game. Yes, we do. Our defense cost us this game, and it wasn't just the three errors that we had, but it was also the misplay of the pop-up right over there at second that went as a hit, but it was really that play should have been made. We had a couple of pass balls. We had a throwing error over here um, on a swinging third strike. That led to a run. I mean, Jake Beck is going to take the loss, but does not deserve that whatsoever. No. And it's it's another trend, right? And, and it's one of the things that we, we keep talking about and keep discussing from what we've seen, which is something just seems to be missing, right? And, and the components are all there, right? Absence, you know, you know the 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 refrain of absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, right? In the sense that there is a complete game out here, you know, if you could pull bits and pieces from each of the games played over these last few weeks, Austin High is certainly capable of that complete game. They just haven't done it yet. Certainly not in a while. One hundred percent. You know, one hundred percent. So it's still. You're still waiting on that. You now fall one and seven in district, eight and fifteen overall in the season. That'll give Aikens their sixth win overall on the season. You're in a situation here now as you're Austin High, as time begins to drain on because the next time we're out here, Friday night, five o'clock first pitch, four thirty pregame show. You're in a situation now. You're starting to need help. You're looking around the district if you want an invitation. And if you want to reserve a, a spot in the dance, you're going to need a little bit of help from those ahead of you and around you in the district to make that. Well, you're being generous. I think we're going to meet, need more than a little bit of help. <laughs> we're going to need a whole bunch of help. And we've got to win our own games. I mean, everybody right. else can help us as much as possible. But if we cannot win winnable games, you know, we've, we've got to make a change. We, we have got to do that. These kids have the ability Mm -hmm. to, to catch the ball, field the ball, throw the ball. They have the ability to hit the ball. They have the ability to run the bases. We just have to do it. Sometimes when you get going on in a bad way, it's tough to break that string. Right. And we have to find a way, and I know Coach A has given it everything that he's got, to find a way to break that string. He changed the lineup, changed some defensive uh, players out here, just to give it, find some spark, do something right. different to your point, and we just didn't get there. Well, this is a very, very winnable game, a game we should have had just like last Tuesday's. But, we, you know, for whatever reason, the winnable games were not closing on. Yeah, and it's just another situation. You just kind of come up just a little bit short, right? And it's one of those you start strong, but that – that strong start just has not carried over for the remainder of the game. And it's, you know, if it was a one-inning game, things would look pretty good. You know, if it, you know, two-inning game, things would look pretty good. But you have to finish throughout, and you have to go all seven innings. And unfortunately, just not able to do that tonight. Unable to pull that off last week um, or even in the week prior to that. So... 7-5, to five, the final score here. Aikens over Austin High. We'll be back Friday night, 5 o'clock first pitch, 4.30 pregame show. On behalf of all of us here from Vite Media, Alden Shep, our producer Lulu, Skylar Gillespie, our uh, quality control, and, of course, Miss Suna, who's part of Vite Media. On behalf of my broadcast partner, this is David Roy saying so long from Burger Field, 7-5. Your final score. We'll see you Friday night.
teeth were in the front. I fell off a roof, messed up my teeth. I would be talking and my tooth would just fall out. That's when I turned to 8118 Dental Professionals. When I first came in, it was so welcoming. I just felt a connection, felt like family. It is worth every penny because you get that peace of mind that everything is okay. I can't stop smiling. Why wait? From implants to full mouth restoration. Go to 8118dentalimplants.com to see how we can help you smile again. Do you need a haircut? A real haircut? One that's tapered or blocked, clipped or trimmed just the way you like it? Come let the licensed barbers at the Sportsman's Barbershop take care of you. The Sportsman's Barbershop is a friendly, no-frills neighborhood barbershop located in Austin's Brikerwood area. Our barbers specialize in traditional haircuts for men and boys, along with beard trims and straight razor shaves. The trophies and mounts donated by customers that line the barbershop walls serve as testaments to over 60 years of serving Austin. Give the guys a call, 512-459-9525, to schedule Schedule your appointment today or look us up online at sportsmansbarbershop.com. The Sportsman's Barbershop. And Cheer on your Austin High School baseball team and enjoy the spring season with ease thanks to Terrytown Pharmacy. We're not just a pharmacy, we are a neighborhood health hub offering prescription services, immunizations, home delivery, and a charming selection of gifts for any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a win or supporting a player, find the perfect gift and keep your health in check at Terrytown Pharmacy. Let's celebrate health, wellness, and community spirit together. Nance Orthodontics is committed to providing the highest quality orthodontics for the Austin community. Dr. Nance is a board-certified orthodontist and offers Invisalign and braces to create beautiful smiles. Our friendly team is passionate about creating beautiful, life-changing smiles for all ages. With the latest technological advances, patient comfort and happiness are our highest priority. Give us a call for your complimentary consultation today. 